main idea is getting the point. Did you ever know somebody who rambles on and on and on and on and you're like, tell me what the point of that was, right? And it could have been simplified in just one sentence. Sometimes that happens both in conversation verbally and in writing. So we're going to help you make the sense of those points. And more importantly, how to organize it if you're the one presenting those ideas. So this is the lesson within the reading skills course, but more importantly, it is really going to be a benefit to you as you start to do some of your writing assignments in your future English courses, okay? So whether you're in reading skills now or whether you've moved past that, it's still going to help you in some way, shape, or form, we hope. Okay, so you're probably wondering who you're talking to, and well, my name's Heather. So <laughs> this is a picture of both Mallory and I. And Mallory, just so you know, she will be um, answering all of your questions. So be sure to keep her busy, and she'll be answering those as they come in. You can ask questions. We also have a chat feature, which will post questions out to you from time to time. And if there's any issues, we'll certainly tell you both verbally and in there. Just so you know, this is being recorded, so you don't have to worry about writing every single thing down. Plus, there will be a, a little surprise goodie at the end that hopefully you'll all appreciate and really like, we hope. And this will be posted on the community. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but we do want to get started here. So in main ideas, getting the point, what are we going to cover today? Okay, so this is where we talk about learning objectives. By the end of this, Mallory and I are hoping that you are able to do a couple of things. We want to make sure that you could pick out a paragraph and some main ideas and details to go along with it, and also compose them. So write them on your own. We also want to make sure that you understand chronological order and that you can arrange your information using that. It's also important that you are able to understand the differences between comparing and contrasting because that could help an organization. And finally, we're going to touch on cause and effect and the relationship between those two items. That's a lot to cover, and that's covered in the book, of course, and in multiple places throughout your program. But before we get into that, Mallory and I want to tell you a story. I'm going to be reciting this. so. Just for right now, put your pens down and listen along. Um, I think you'll enjoy this. So here we go. Gina had always dreamt about her wedding since she was a little girl. She knew what her dress would look like, the flowers she would have, the kind of cake she would eat, but she was always missing one part, the groom. Once she finally met Wayne, she had the last piece in place to achieve her dreams. Aside from a few deviations, she had the wedding day she had mostly always imagined. The morning of the wedding didn't go as planned. Gina was very nervous and jittery. She was essentially on an emotional roller coaster. She started yelling at the bridesmaids about not getting ready quick enough. In return, the bridesmaids started yelling at the women doing their hair. Gina couldn't handle all of the stress and started to wonder if she was having cold feet. She ended up locking herself in the bathroom to hide from it all. As she was crying and decided if she was making the right choice, she noticed a letter lying on the sink. It was from Wayne. She read the letter and instantly all of her worries vanished. She apologized to the girls, finished getting ready as quickly as possible, and headed to the church. As the doors of the church opened with the ceremonious entry tune, Gina felt that everything was finally falling into place just as she had planned. From the way Gina looked at Wayne as she was walking down the aisle, everyone else could feel it too. Aside from Wayne's ring not fitting, the ceremony itself went flawlessly. The couple exchanged vows, had their first kiss as newlyweds, and danced their way down the aisle to ho hey which was the song they karaoke to on their first date. After a few pictures, they were ready to celebrate with their guests. The reception did turn out to be quite the celebration, as all of Gina's planning to make the guest experience a great one did pay off. The 
food up front was amazing, foreshadowing all of the four-course meal that would fill the tables. The father-daughter dance brought tears to everyone's eyes as the duo flow, flowed around the dance floor to the song that was once her parents' wedding song. Everyone kept the dance floor full, only breaking for cutting of the cake and for group shots in the photo booth. By the end of the night, the guests had their share of laughter, food, fun, and of course, memories that would last forever. After all of the planning and the stress, everything turned out to be quite perfect. Gina had the wedding day of her dreams, just like the groom had promised her in the letter she had read earlier that day. Gina was thankful for the time she spent in preparation, and she was even more thankful for having met Wayne. She was looking forward to spending the rest of her life with Wayne, just with a little less planning, at least on her part. Bravo, bravo, that was the story. <laughs> we hope you liked it. So I hope you really did enjoy that, but we did decide we wanted to show you some visuals along with just our story because visuals can do a lot for us. Um, just by putting in the chat box or sending it in through the question forum, how easy or how comfortable would you feel trying to put that story that we just told you into an essay put on paper? Do you think that's something that would be daunting and you would be not so happy to do it? Or do you think it might not be so bad and it's your story, so why wouldn't you be able to tell that easily? We are getting responses that are saying that it would be probably pretty difficult. And that can seem like the case at first, but here's what Mallory and me decided to do for you today. When we thought about this webinar, we figured we didn't want to just go to text because, you know, that's what your books do. They're already in text form. So we wanted to use this story and some visuals to help you get from the starting point to an end product and how to tackle this, not just when you're reading it, but also when you're going to be asked to put it together yourself. So you probably didn't realize it, but we had five slides here, okay? And in these five slides, we did something we think was pretty clever. Mallory, if you can for us, show us that next slide. We just put together for you in this little story a five-paragraph essay. Okay, we started by introducing Gina and what her big plans were, and then we decided to tell about her day, which included getting ready in that stressful situation, as well as the perfect ceremony and the really fun reception. And then we ended it with a conclusion that talked about her hopes for happily ever after. So. That's a way to think about this. Again, you know, when you hear about even the essay that's going to come later, it's 750 words. We easily had that amount in that story we told. So it is easy to capture, but we're going to show you in detail how we did this and how we decided to share this with you today. So the first thing we did, honestly, was we went through and we looked to see what nice clip art we had. That was really the reasoning for how we got started. So these were the five pictures we decided on as our main focal point. Okay, but when we had this, we weren't really sure, you know, how are we going to tell the story? What do we want to talk about? We knew we wanted weddings. Mallory and I are always in, we're always in weddings. So that's something very familiar to us. And obviously these are fictional characters, but we've been through it. So that's what we wanted to share. So before we got started, we had these pictures, but we decided we have to get them in order because that's how we have to tell our story to make sense to you, all of you. So chronological order is one of the key ways to get started in terms of organization. We didn't jump right into just writing this full five paragraph essay that we just read to you. We had to go in incremental steps. So we looked at these pictures and said, okay, how do we want to start? The start is your introduction. Sometimes that's not the easiest thing to start with, but in our case it made sense because we knew we had to tell you who Gina was. So we introduced Gina and decided that would be our, our introductory focus and we were going to touch on her wedding day, of course. So then 
in the events that took place that day, it wouldn't make sense to talk about the, the party reception before we talked about the events leading before it. So Gina wakes up that day naturally, and then the first thing she has to do is she's going to have to get ready. So that would take place of the first body paragraph, getting ready, and then where is she getting ready? Why is she getting ready? It's to go to the next step, which would have been that ceremony. So one of the parts of the story we told you was about that ceremony and how that took place. After the ceremony, we told you they are so excited to celebrate with their guests, which is there uh, they were leaving to head to that reception. And then we described the reception in this third body paragraph. And then finally, we had to close it out with them as a newlywed couple. So again, we even at this step, we didn't go and start writing everything. What we did was we said, okay, we have an order. Now let's try and work on each of these first. Okay, so this is where once you have an idea of what you're going to write about, you have to start putting things down on paper, not just going and writing these paragraphs. Anybody who tells you they do that and they're good at it probably is lying to you. <laughs> Mallory and me were going back and forth for quite a bit just trying to you know, figure out this order and the details that we want to communicate. So when we got to this step, we knew we now had to develop these paragraphs, right? So we needed main ideas, like what is the whole point of each of those stages, and then what are the details we're going to fill it in with. So one way to think about this when you're writing is to think about this almost like a house, right? So the whole house would act as a paragraph, and that blue part there, which is the roof, that's your main idea. The roof is your main idea, and to support that main idea, you have to have details. If you just try to tell a main idea without having details, that's not going to be supported well. It's kind of like if you said, I hate cats, or cats are better than dogs, and that was your main idea. If you don't have any details to back that up, um, it, for example, like if you didn't have any experiences ever meeting a cat, how would you be able to say that cats are better or worse than dogs? So maybe you had a, a bad experience with a pet cat, and that was one of your detail supporting legs, or, you know, your um, dog really treated you better than your cat, or, you know what I mean, you have to have those details to back up that main idea. If you look at this and think about this house example, if you pull out any of those details, your house is going to be a little shaky. That's what your reader is going to feel as they're going through your information. If you have a claim, whether it's really detailed or not is going to make a, di a big difference as to how much they believe what you're trying to put forth or how much they understand. So in the case of, let's just take any of these paragraphs, let's look at the reception. You know, we had this picture that we wanted to use and then we had to come up with, okay, we want the main idea of the one body par paragraph to be about the reception. But what are we going to talk about there? Are we going to say that the food is delicious or was it really, really terrible and you only got small portions? Or, you know, are you going to talk about dancing, right? Because that was one thing we included. We talked about their first dance. And one thing we always love at weddings is the photo booth, right? Because if you've been to weddings recently, that's a pretty popular trend and it usually ends in a lot of fun. And we also had cake in there too. So we try to capture enough of the details so it almost felt like you were at their wedding. You understood what took place. Maybe, you know, you didn't go through all of the emotions, but you understood what happened there. If you look at that green box that we have off to the right hand side, you'll notice that the green box is actually similar to a whole paragraph. Because that's all of the information we touched on in the paragraph about the reception. So the main idea was that the reception happened and everything went well. The details to support that were in the sentences where we talked about the food, the dancing, the cake, and the photo booth opportunities. 
So again, before we got into these paragraphs, we literally had just a whiteboard where we talked and outlined this, and we said, okay, in the reception paragraph, we want to talk about food, dance, and cake, and photo booth, just so that we knew before we even got into typing it out what we wanted to touch on, and that's something you should do as you move forward. So we did this, and we did this for all of our paragraphs to break it down so that it was easy to type at that point because we knew exactly what we were looking for. So you see we just, each of those, we had to make into a paragraph to get to a five paragraph essay that we were shooting for. And the blue text along the top, that's the main idea of each paragraph. And the pink bulleted items are the details. So each one of those house items, you figure, were kind of supported by those details. Okay, so just something to think about as you move forward or, you know, when you're reading something, try and figure out what is the main thing they're talking about? What is the whole paragraph about? That's your item in blue. And then the details help you support that. Okay, so another thing we had to think about was, you know, comparing and contrasting. This could also help you organize your thoughts. Sometimes it doesn't always make the most sense to go in order of the events of the day because sometimes you're not talking about that type of topic. Maybe you're talking about, you know, a trip that you had in Disneyland versus Disney World. Obviously, they could have happened at different times, but that's not really relevant. Instead, you might want to have a paragraph on how they're the same and how they're different. And then one about your final thoughts on, you know, of course, each of those. So when we look at comparing, we're talking about describing how items are alike. So sometimes this will be done on a paragraph on its own. On the other one, well, we it's really how the items are different, okay? So we do have a little typo there. Let's blame Mallory for that. Um, but so she's fixing it right now for us. But she is showing us that contrasting means we're talking about how, how items are different. And this is simple enough, but sometimes, especially when you're in testing environments, for example, if you're given an, an essay prompt or something where it says, contrast two items, it's easy to confuse, well, are we talking about how they're alike or how they're different? So one way, I'm not sure if it's the most scientific way to think about this, but one way I try and remember the difference between the two is the number of humps in the letters. So compare has an M, whereas contrast has an N. Okay, so in compare, the letter M naturally has two humps in it, right? So the way I think about it is what do they both, usually when I think about the word both, I'm thinking about two items. So what do they both have in common? How are they both alike? This one and this one both are doing this, right? So what do they have in common? Contrast only has one hump. So this helps me remember, okay, what is unique about each one? And some words that you'll see when you're describing contrasting information is different or instead of, however. Those are key words to look for when you're thinking about these because it's, it's easier to say now, but when you're reading text, sometimes it's a little bit convoluted. It's a little bit messy. So look for keywords like that to help you understand if they're trying to say if two things are alike or if they're different. Let's look at an example. Sticking with the wedding theme here, of course, and we have two cakes. Again, if you have been to a wedding lately, they may have had a groom's cake, a relatively new kind of thing, where it symbolizes things that the groom likes. And then usually you do have a traditional cake there. So if we were to compare these two or talk about how they're similar, we could say that both of them are decorated. And both of them are on some kind of base to help keep them sturdy. If we wanted to contrast them, remember, contrast has the letter N, which has one hump, so the things unique to each of them. Then we're going to talk about the differences. So we could say the traditional cake is taller 
than the groom's cake because it has more layers. Also, easily noticeable, the colors are different. So that's another contrasting item that the two of them have. So keep that in mind when you try to describe or read about the details about something. Knowing how alike or how different things are could help you really make sense of what the author is trying to get at. Another thing to be on the lookout for is cause and effect. Cause and effect, sometimes when words are created, you're going to notice that these words don't sound anything like their meaning. But in this case, they really try and help you out here. Cause causes the effect. So the effect is what happens because of the cause. So the way to think about this is that you have a cause, something happens, and that causes something else to happen, and that's an effect. Okay, and we're going to go over some examples here. But when you're seeing this, look for words like because or consequently, therefore. These are words that are going to help you uh, pick out that they're trying to tell you something happened, and that caused something else to happen. Okay, so in our example, we talked in our story about Wayne's hands, well, the ring not fitting on Ring's hands. So the cause was Wayne's hands were all sweaty when he's standing up at the altar. And because he was sweaty, so there's a key word, because, that means his ring wouldn't go on. So during the ceremony, we talked about how it was perfect, minus the fact that his ring didn't go on. And this is why. So the cause was his hands were sweaty. And that caused the ring to not be able to go on properly. Okay, so very simple example we have here. A cause leads to... Thinking of dominoes. Okay, so if we look at these pictures, we see here on the right that a hand, the cause, is poking a domino. Okay, so the cause is the hand poking the domino, and what's going to happen? As an effect of that, the domino is going to fall over. This is a pretty clear-cut example, but you'll notice a couple things going on here. It's called sometimes the domino effect. If you hit one thing, that thing hits the next thing, hits the next thing, and so on, and it repeats itself. And that's what happens when, and that's why we all stack up dominoes and then knock them over. <laughs> so how can we see this in a real, well, not so real, but in our story real example? Sometimes you'll be asked to find the indirect cause. So it's not as direct as this happened and then this happened because of it. Okay, so this is where we have a cause that produces an effect that produces another effect. That sounds complicated, but it's really not. Let's look at the bride starting to get nervous, okay? So we talked in that very um, first part about how our, our bride Gina was nervous because she's, she's thinking she's getting cold feet. So that caused her to be, again, nervous, and that makes her end up yelling at the bridesmaid. So that right there is a cause and effect. Gina's nervous, so the effect is now that she's yelling at the bridesmaids. But what Gina probably didn't think would happen is that the bridesmaids would now start yelling at the beauticians and yelling at the people doing their hair because now they're nervous, right? So if you look at this little example, if we just had the first two boxes, this was the cause and this was the effect because of it. But if we look just at the second and third boxes, this is actually a cause on its own, and this is the effect, okay? But what we have here when we look at all three is that this is an indirect cause. The bride starting to get nervous is an indirect cause that ended up having the bridesmaids yell at the beautician. Again, Gina probably didn't even realize that would be a product of what she did, but she started it in this chain of events where this cause turned into an effect, which turned into a cause that turned into another effect, right? So sometimes there's a chain reaction or a domino effect. 
this is going to be something you hear about a lot of times in, in science, for example. If you adjust something here, it may automatically cause something to happen, which you don't even realize will cause something else to happen, because a lot of your body's processes are in a step-by-step -step fashion in big pathways. So by changing one thing, maybe 30 steps behind, you might not even realize that that may cause an effect somewhere else along the line that you didn't even think of. So an indirect cause isn't an immediate in the step behind, but it may have come somewhere else that resulted inevitably in that change. Okay, so those are the big things to consider, but one thing we want to leave you with here is a little bit of a summary. So we're going to show you what we're going to leave you with. And what you see on the screen now is going to be what we call a cheat sheet. I like cheat sheets because it's hard for re me to remember everything I read in a book. So a lot of times I'll make these myself, but what we did was we made this for you. You know, with this, you could think about it like a five paragraph essay, okay? And each of these is the paragraph there. The introduction would be like this cake topper, which we have as the heart. And that's really where you capture the audience's attention. Each of these layers would act like a layer in the cake in this visual, but also would substitute like a body paragraph in the composition. Finally, this base is kind of like your conclusion because that's going to hold, help hold everything together and really sum it up so it's nice and cohesive and it looks like it all belongs together. So what we did for you here is we showed you this breakdown and we also gave you some things to think about so that you can remember what you should be doing in your intro and what you should be doing in your conclusion as well as the layers. And if you look at this nice little extra essay we typed up for you, this whole thing would be, of course, your essay. Each one of these indicated by these little brackets is a paragraph. So within each of these brackets, each of these paragraphs, you should have one main idea and supporting details. Okay, so when we talked earlier and when Mallory and me were writing up all of those pink details to match the blue main topics, we then had to convert it into paragraphs like this. And we had to make sure each one of our paragraphs had its own main idea, that we already identified and we had to include all the details. Until we did that, we didn't have paragraphs. Okay, so your paragraphs might be short, they may be big, whatever it takes for you to get the point across. Okay, you also see our house example, so hopefully you'll remember how important those details are to the main idea to make up your whole paragraph. We also threw in our little mnemonic device to help you try and remember the difference between comparing and contrasting. And we left you with this domino figure here to help you think about cause and effect and how one thing causes another to happen and sometimes even more things to happen after that. Um, we could come back to this, but I just want to really quickly put this up here um, for you. It's our contact information so that if you need to email us, you can, or you could also find us right on the community. Mallory got fancy and she has a period in between our first and last name on the community, so you'll have to type that in the search box. I just have my first and my last name, so you'll type that in the search box. Be sure to make us your friends 